Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2001 F350 Ford. This has a 6.8 liter V10 in it. And the problem we have is the dipstick tube is rusted out right there where it goes through the block down into the oil pan. And uh, what happened here, uh, it gets real thin around that bulge. You can see the brand new one right here. Right there is where it stops into the cast iron block. There's an O-ring seal and then it necks down where it goes into the crankcase. And uh, the biggest problem is there's a, a lot of junk in the way to get at that to take out that last piece. Plus it's rusted in really bad in the last area right here between this flange and the O-ring because that's where the road salt gets in at. Now we got to figure out a way to get that piece out and what I've done so far to be able to get that out without removing a lot of stuff and getting stuff out of the way this is what I did so far. This uh, piece right here actually goes on, you can see it on this tap, what I use is a 3 8 coarse tap and it's a plug type tap. It's got a little taper to the end of it so it can kind of thread itself in. But it's 3 8 16 uh, coarse thread and what I did <clears throat> was put on a 3 8 nut. It's a flange type nut, it's just what I happen to have. It gives me a little more surface area. And then this tube here is just about the right size where we can take that and we can thread it in and get a bite with those uh, the teeth on the, on the dot or on the tap. Okay, so what I did is I threaded it in, and then I use a pry bar against this here, and I work on both sides, keep working it, and I put some uh, penetrating oil on it as well. But I got that first piece out down to the O ring. You can see that right there. We still have this piece in, so I'm going to show you how with that tap we can tap into that other piece and be able to get that out without having to uh, take the oil cooler off and a lot of the stuff that's in the way. Okay we're rolling here underneath the driver's side right there's your engine oil filter. Now I had the exhaust manifolds off which is the reason I found this problem. Um, I'm putting on a, a uh, Gale Banks header system and uh, it makes it a little easier to get at but uh, I also took off this, uh, this front drive shaft here and I wired that up over here out of the way so we got more room to get up there and work. You can see right there where I have the tap inserted. That's where the dipstick tube goes in. And the old cooler is right there above the filter and then that goes along the block. It's got a couple of bolts for the uh, motor mount going through it as well up there a little further. And uh, what I'm going to use, when you go to put that tap in also back off that nut as far up the threads as you can go. And then what I use to drive that is an eight point socket. See if I can get a good shot of it here. An eight point socket will drive that uh, the square on the end of that tap. Okay. Oh, looks like we just pushed it in. I think it just went into the crankcase. Okay, here's a shot of the the hole in the casting where that dipstick tube goes in. And uh, I'm going to clean that up with a, a probably a Dremel tool. I'll try and get a Dremel tool in there and clean, get that rust out. You can kind of see it's a little rough around the edges. But uh, we're going to clean that up good so that the O-ring slides in nice. We'll lube up that O-ring with some grease as well. But uh, the other thing is, <clears throat> this is my first time through on this. And in hindsight, um, if you take a look at this tap, this is what we uh, got that top section out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of show you here. There's the new, the new dipstick, and there's a real thin spot where that O-ring goes. And what I did is I threaded it in a little bit too far, and it split right there where that O-ring was at. So in hindsight, what I would do different is I would only run that tap in, you know, maybe halfway, you know, instead of going as far as I did. Because if I'd have gone in maybe halfway, I could have gotten that whole tube out. And as it is, this section of the tube has fallen down, and it's right here in the bottom of the pan. And uh, what I did is I went in that hole with a screwdriver. I got a long screwdriver here, and there's no windage tray or anything to, to hang it up. And I kind of heard it hit on the bottom of the pan, so it's down there in the bottom where it's not going to cause any issues. So if you don't get it out, it's not a huge deal. But uh, the biggest thing is this rusted part up here to get that out. And I'm going to show you how I did that. Now, that was in that hole. And what I did is, is came in with a, a pry bar. And I had that dry shaft off. And you, you got enough room here and some metal where you can actually work it. 
you can come up and you can pry back and forth on each side. You can work that up on this side. And right now the camera's in the way, but uh, you can get on the other side and you can work. You can, you can pry off the block, or you can pry off the top of this filter here. You can work it up, put some um, penetrating oil on, and, and eventually you'll get that out. But like I said, just don't, don't tap it in quite as far as what I did. And that'll save you having to pull a lot of stuff off of that engine. Like that old cooler and that whole assembly. Okay, there's enough of the flaky rust around that hole in the block where that dipstick tube goes in that it doesn't want to allow that new dipstick tube in. So what I need to do is go in and ream it. I've got a 7 16 reamer and that 7 16 is just about exactly what the outside of that steel tube is. And uh, that'll clean that hole up nice and clean. So what we do is take that up and there's enough room with that reamer and a drill. And like I say, it's a straight flute reamer. And we can take that right down through and clean that hole up. And that'll get that, uh, that flaky rust out of there. You'll see a closer shot of that reamer. Like I said, it's just a straight flute 7 16 reamer. And uh, cleans that hole up real nice. Allows everything to slide right in. So just one more step to make everything go smooth with that new dipstick installation. Okay, we reamed that hole for the dipstick tube, so there may be small amounts of metal that got in there and also that last piece of that tube, which is steel. What we're going to do is put in the uh, gold plug. I'm a dealer for these. These gold plug uh, will pull that metal out of the, out of the oil. And, and uh, these are very strong magnets. To give you some idea, this bolt probably is a pound and a half, two pounds and very very powerful magnet very strong and that'll pull out any of that metal that may have fallen in there or the rust from uh, from that dipstick tube so just another thing to uh, to clean up that oil and these work we've got them for the differentials as well so if it's something you're interested in you can contact me but uh, definitely a good idea okay we're getting ready to drain the oil out we're going to take out that uh, gold plug we got that gold plug uh, magnetic drain plug here in the pan See if we got that piece of the uh, dipstick tube that fell down in and any of the metal that may have uh, fallen in from reaming the hole. But uh, you can see up there where the dipstick tube is at, kind of at the top of the filter, up there towards the end of my finger. Everything's nice and dry. We got about probably 2,000 miles since I put that, that uh, Banks header system on and put in that new, that new uh, dipstick tube. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pull out that drain plug and see just what we've caught uh, and see how that worked for pulling out any of those pieces. Here's a, a good shot of that gold plug and what it's caught. I'm going to wipe off the metal that I can get with this rag. Like I said, it's a strong magnet. What I might end up doing is just using a blowgun, compressed air blowgun, to blow the rest of that off. But it gives you some idea what we caught out of that, out of that oil. That uh, magnetic plug had a hold of this, but it was turned sideways. This is the rest of that dipstick tube. And I had to fish around with a magnet, and it kept wanting to get in there sideways. And that's why the, uh, the magnet could pull it out. It kept wanting to be sideways. Because that's the strongest part where the magnet grabs it is on the side. So I think the, the gold plug had a hold of it, but as soon as I took it out, it fell right back down in, inside on the bottom. But with this magnet here, I kept fighting with it, and it kept coming up sideways, and I had to maneuver it with a screwdriver. But right there is the rest of that dipstick tube. So, like I say, we got about 2,000 miles on it since we, uh, we put the new dipstick in. So, you can get that tube out of that hole. It's, it's small enough. It'll fit right on through. But uh, that magnetic drain plug will catch any of those pieces that, uh, that you have to ream off or clean off. But uh, definitely will come out. So... That just gives you some idea of uh, how I got this dipstick tube problem resolved. And uh, like I say, it, it may, uh, may just work for you as well. So I want to thank you for watching my video. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donsoil.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. 
you can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.